Hi and welcome to this video log with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Well it's been a while since I've vlogged and that's because I was all summer in Cape Verde and although I'm doing a video log about that just sorting out all of the clips that I've taken is taking a long time. But in the meantime I thought we'd cover a topic that's quite useful for both swimmers and for triathletes. Now in a recent interview Jess Learmouth said about her training regime that she does a lot of hypoxic sets when she's swimming. Now for those of you who don't know, hypoxic sets are where you slowly but surely reduce the number of breaths you take in a particular distance. Now normally that's over 25 metres and you might go from five breaths in a length to four to three to two to one and even zero so that you're holding your breath for a long time. And she says she uses that as a helpful thing for when she's in that washing machine effect with other swimmers and she might actually not be able to take a breath for a number of seconds. And simply having practiced hypoxic breathing means that when she gets into that situation there's no panic and she just swims through it and as you've seen the results she generally comes out first. Now it takes a bit of swimming to work up to that hypoxic model where you can not breathe for a whole length. Um, and, and for most triathletes and, and even swimmers that's going to take time. But what a lot of triathletes don't do is they don't tumble turn. And a tumble turn, as I've said many times before, actually gives you a period where you don't breathe so you get used to that feeling of not being able to breathe if you're in that washing machine at the start of a race and you actually can't breathe, either because someone's in front of you, but the side of you, or because you get knocked underwater. Now the worst thing you can do when that happens is actually panic. But if you've never actually practiced holding your breath, that's the most likely course that you're going to go through. But if you tumble, you want to do it efficiently. And to do it efficiently, you really do have to go through the process. It's very easy to tumble and start using your arms to try and turn you around. Instead of that, we should be using the core to drag our legs over and leaving our arms in the streamlined position so we can instantly push off the wall. Now a lot of club swimmers use their arms to turn. They don't get into that instant push off position because until you're streamlined you shouldn't be pushing off the wall and that means they're always slower than they need to be when they're tumbling. Now as a competitive swimmer that really doesn't make sense. You want to be into the wall and bang off the wall. The faster you come in and actually tumble and go the quicker you'll actually be. But what won't change is the amount of time you necessarily hold your breath. And that's really the key for triathletes. Holding your breath through the tumble out and say out to the five meter mark. And that probably will be two, three, four, five seconds of holding your breath, which really and truly is the maximum you're going to have to hold your breath in the washing machine start of a triathlon. So let's go to the computer, have a look at how it's done, and then come back and have a little discussion. So exactly how should a tumble turn be performed? Well, let's just look at these girls coming in. OK, so we're getting into the turn, and you can see the girl on the far end is leaving her arms back and instantly getting into that streamlined position. The girl towards us is doing the same, but as she gets into that position, she's just putting her arms towards her head. That means she's just being a little bit slower in actually getting into that streamlined position. However, if we look at them, the girl on the far side is actually doing a slower tumble, whereas the girl on the near side is using her core to flip those legs around. You can see the difference in speed in getting those, the, the feet onto the wall. So they're both about the same speed. And there we go, we do the tumble turn. Let's go all the way back and just have a look at that again. Okay, so here we go, full speed, coming in, slightly slower tumble on the far side, and so the girl on the near side actually catches up. Another factor in the speed, or shall we say, efficiency of the tumble is that whip over of the legs and it makes a difference uh, in both the swimmers. We can see the girl on the right hand side is coming over fairly slowly and putting her feet on the wall. 
But the girl on the near side is whipping her feet over. Mm. And because she whips her feet over, they actually come out very much in line with the body. So we're very much in a line. Um, whereas the girl on the far side has the feet well above the body. And I would suggest that her position would be more like that. Yeah, so the feet are above the body. Now, if the feet are above the body, you tend to push off in a curve. So you're pushing off downwards, whereas the girl near us pushes off straight. And you can see that difference right there. The girl nearest us is catching up to the girl on the far side without any increased effort. Because in swimming, if you take a curved line, it's going a hell of a lot further than if you go in a straight line. The last comparison between these girls we'll look at is the way they actually push off the wall and the orientation of them as they push off the wall. Let's just take it in at quarter speed. And you'll see the girl on the far side is flipping her legs over and she's staying on her back. Whereas the girl on the near side at the last second rotates onto her side and pushes off on her side. Um, one can be quicker than the other, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. There's no right or wrong way. But most people do like to try and turn on the side when they tumble. And, and the thing to, not to do is do it when you're on the wall. And you can see the girl on the near side has done it at the very last second before her legs get on the wall so she can instantly push off. Well, how has she done that exactly? Well, if we go backwards and take it really slowly... You'll see at the very last second when her feet are coming over, she actually rotates her shoulders and head, which brings her hip around. So what she's effectively doing is she's rotating her shoulders and head, and that in turn is bringing her hips around. So by the time she hits the wall, she's actually in that sideways position. So For our last look at the tumbles, we're going to take a look at someone doing it really well and really quickly and also coming into the wall very fast. So let's take a look at this at full speed. It's coming in really fast, instantly tumbles into that streamline and off the wall. You can see there's no delay in him coming off the wall, but he is coming off on his back. So how's he doing that? Let's just take that back. Now on his last stroke, his right arm is by his side and he's just flipping into that tumble. The legs are coming over really fast, so they're coming into position to put him in a straight line. Now notice his thigh is not quite 90 degrees to his body. So he's actually in a position where if he was on land, he could actually jump and that's the position we want. So he can get a really powerful push off and look at that, he's going almost five meters with his arms before he takes a single kick and starts turning. Let's just take a look, look at that again at approximately half speed. So he's coming into the wall. You can see he's drawing both arms back into that streamlined position and off the wall, starting to rotate as he kicks. And just one more time at full speed. Here we go. Now that's really fast and a really effective tumble. OK, so there you've seen three examples of pretty good tumbles. And although each one in its own way can be improved, if you can tumble like that, you will get off the wall really fast. Now, if you're a swimmer, that is hugely important. And remember, for all your strokes, you need to be in the streamlined position before you can push off the wall. So the quicker you get into that streamlined position, the quicker you can push off the wall. And you've got to think to yourself, how can I do that? Slowly but surely, you'll get better and better at it if you practice. If you're a triathlete, just holding your breath for that three to five seconds that you take to go in, out of the wall and back to that five meter mark is going to do you really well in a race. If you get into a washing machine, you can't necessarily breathe. Just missing one breath can make you panic. And panic can make a really good race into a really bad race. Okay, so that's it for this week. Like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Just click that bell and you'll be notified when we put more videos up. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week. Keep well.